Hey, what's up, guys? It's FaceCast here, and as you see, there's a new boss in Ender's Echo called the Zap Stinger, so today, we're going to go over it. We'll talk about the best survivors, the best equipment, and the best skills to use, as well as the best strategies. I want to help you guys get the maximum damage, so make sure to like and subscribe. It has come to my attention that you don't own an Ewan Racing gaming chair. If you want to change, go to ewanracing.com, use code FaceCast for 20% off your very own gaming chair or gaming desk. When it comes to the best survivors, best equipment, and best skills, this is a pretty generic boss. So you can pretty much do what you have been doing in Ender's Echo this entire time. But we'll go over it nonetheless. The best survivor to use is your strongest survivor, or Worm, due to his listening bug skill. As you see, it unveils enemy weaknesses and increases their damage taken. So it will pretty much allow you to deal more damage to a target. The common survivor is also a good choice. They have a skill that will increase all skill damage by 3%. The best weapon to use is the Kunai, due to its single target auto aiming capabilities. This thing will keep firing at a boss all over the map and can deal a lot of damage when you evolve it into the spirit shuriken. The best equipment to use is probably your strongest equipment, your highest grade equipment. But keep in mind that a lot of equipment will gain an extra skill when they reach an excellent grade, just like the katana here. Now let's go over the necklaces. I like the eternal necklace at a red grade. It will increase all passive effects plus 15% in battle. The void waker emblem is also a good choice. You can gain berserk for 5 seconds when leveling up plus 40% damage so that will increase your damage by 40% for 5 seconds each time you select a skill in battle. That's pretty nuts. Then it has two other skills right here that will increase your max damage as well as your crit rate. An excellent grade metal neck guard can increase the first passive effect you choose in battle by 30%. So if you select something like the high power bullet which will increase your attack, you can increase your attack by even more if you are wearing the metal neck guard. Let's talk about gloves. The eternal glove will increase your crit rate and crit damage, so it's really effective. And void wicker handguards have a skill that says blood suppression plus 50% damage against elites and bosses. Since Zap Stinger is a boss, you can gain a damage increase with Void Waker handguards. But if you don't have Void Waker handguards, army gloves can increase damage to bosses by 20% at an excellent grade and 50% at an epic grade. Leather gloves can also increase your crit damage, crit rate, and inflict bleed. An excellent grade eternal suit can revive you once as well as increase your attack and movement speed once you have been revived. A legendary grade eternal suit will revive you twice. If you don't have the eternal suit, the full metal suit will also revive you at an excellent grade. And at an epic grade, it will increase your attack and movement speed. S grade belts will increase the revival effect by 20%. But the eternal belt will give you invincibility. And when you're invincible, you can increase your attack by 50% for 3 seconds. The Void Waker Sash doesn't really have any skills that will help you here. But it will increase the revival effect by 20%. And of course, the end game build. You'll see a lot of people who have 300 HP and above wearing the Way Sensor. The Way Sensor will increase your movement speed at an excellent grade. And this is great if you are wearing red Void Waker treads. Because you can increase your damage by a lot. Lot. Here's what I'm talking about with Red Void Waker Treads. They have a skill that says Predator increases proportionate damage against enemies with lower movement speed than you. So you can pretty much increase your attack damage by 50% by increasing your movement speed. Hey guys, did I mention that Eternal Boots will leave a trail of fire behind your survivor that will deal a lot of damage to a boss if they follow you? And just like with Void Waker Treads, they will increase your movement speed by 2. But that's not all. In addition, Epic Light Runners will increase your damage by 20% for 3 seconds after killing an enemy. And this boss has mobs with it, so once you kill a monster, you can get a damage boost. You can also wear excellent prosthetic legs if you want to increase your base movement speed by one, and that's that. Before we go into battle, I want to quickly talk about the best skills to use. So the most important skills to get and evolve as soon as possible are the drones and your weapon. You want to evolve your weapon and both drones as quickly as you can so that you can deal maximum damage. And if you're using Worm, you might want to find the listening bug as well. You may also want to look for other skills that can attack a single target like the lightning emitter. The RPG and the drill shot. When it comes to passive skills, the Koga Ninja Scroll is a great skill to choose. You can use it to evolve the Kunai into the Spirit Shuriken, and it will also increase the value of biofuel on the ground, which in turn can help you level up faster and get skills faster. You will also want to find the High Power Bullet to increase your attack by a percentage. That's a very important skill. The Energy Cube to decrease your cooldown. The Ammo Thruster to increase the flight speed of your projectiles and accuracy, and if you want to increase your movement speed for whatever reason, you are going to want to look for sports shoes. Let's go fight the boss, check 
check out their skills and talk about the best strategies. Now, as you see here, I can select the listening bug right away. And I don't really need any of these skills, but I'll grab the RPG. Check out these eggs here that it drops. Scorpions will hatch from them and start attacking you. They will also leave this lasting damage on the ground and you cannot remove it with fire. The strategy is pretty much the same as any other boss. You're going to want to keep attacking it, stay as close as you can and keep on dealing damage to it. And if you are wearing something that will increase the revival effect, you're going to want to take a death around the one minute mark or two deaths. There we go. We have died twice, so our attack and movement speed should be increased. This boss will also try to shoot lasers at us, but we can easily avoid it, easily avoid it. It's going to charge us right now, and as you see, it's dropping those eggs. There's a lot of scorpions there. This boss does have a lot of mobs. So if you are wearing light runners, you can kill these mobs to get a damage boost. We now have a five-star kunai. I usually like to evolve the kunai within 30 seconds. So we're not going for the most damage here. We're just checking out this boss right now. It's shooting lasers at us. It's rushing us. It leaves lasting damage on the ground, spawns a bunch of enemies, and it shoots these projectiles at us. Look how ballistic it's going. It is firing these things off all over the place. There's a lot of lasting damage on the ground. I don't want to run over it, but I do want to heal. Let's grab that food on the ground. Enemies are all over the place. Everything's on fire. There's a magnet up here, though. And let's go. We have five seconds left. Let's keep on dealing as much damage as we can. Let's keep on stalking the scorpion. There we go. The spirit shuriken and type B drone did nearly the same amount of damage damage. In one run, we are in first place. Let's go. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or tips, leave them in the comments below. Smash like and subscribe. I'll see you later.